LDWMMAC, LDMMAC, this is your boy, the coach, you live, live, live on the coaching show, the coach, show live. Okay, guys, so Area Hawani and Dana White, you know, it's it's been, you know, they've got a, a very checkered and colored pads. I mean, neither one of them, they don't like each other. Um, Area Hawani has, uh, you know, he, he's no longer at ESPN. Now, it's kind of crazy, man, that, uh, you know, Area Hawani was actually, he was doing well, and his show was actually pretty popular. Um, you know, he was getting, like, a lot of the, the really good interviews. And, you know, Area Hawani, you either love him or you hate him. You know, you just, you either love him or you hate him. And Area Hawani can get stuff started. He can get it started. Um, he'll set people up. Like, you guys remember when he set uh, Megan Anderson up. <laughs> he was doing an interview with Megan Anderson, and then, you know, he, uh, on the back end, got Chris Cyborg on the phone. And then put put him on the phone. Like, Ari Hawani, he beautifully set that up. Now, I don't think Megan was very happy about that. Of course, I mean, she wouldn't. And, you know, and I can understand why she wasn't happy about it. Um, but, damn. So, Dana White, this is crazy, man. Like, when Ari Hawani, when he was at ESPN, and if Dana White, you know, actually had to come, you know, to the set, they made it so Ari Hawani couldn't even cross paths with Dana White. Like Dana White was like, look, I don't even want to see him. Okay, I don't want him to see him. I don't even want him to be in my vision anywhere. And then, you know, Ari was talking about how he was escorted <laughs> out of ESPN. Damn. You know, I'm going to tell you, man, that just tell you how powerful Dana White is. Dana White can come into your stuff, into your job, and they can escort you out your job where you work at. <laughs> Oh, man. Dana White been treating Area Hawani like a little hoe for years. I'm talking about, man, he been treating him like a hoe. I'm talking about, man, just be talking junk to him, telling him to shut up. Like, Dana has pretty much, man, it, it, it's been like this between these two for a long time. But I'm going to tell you, man, what, what kind of got Dana White popping off like this. See, Area Hawani, he's a good, he good journalist, but Area just talk too damn much. And Area don't know when to shut the hell up. That's his problem. He talked too damn much. And what Area was doing, man, he was leaking out information. Um, like, you know how in boxing, you know, they'll sign a, a, non, uh, a non-disclosure agreement where one fighter can announce the fight. Like with Mayweather and Pacquiao, when they were going through their saga and they were going to fight, Manny Pacquiao actually signed a non-disclosure agreement where he couldn't reveal the fight first. He couldn't say anything. Floyd Mayweather was the one that had to reveal the fight. That's crazy. But, you know, of course, Manny Pacquiao got an extra bag for keeping his mouth shut. Well, they didn't promise Area Hawani a bag, but they would leak information out. Area would catch wind of it. And they would tell Ariel, don't tell anybody. We want to be the first to announce this. Don't tell a single soul. And it's like, you know, hours after they told him don't say anything, well, he would just go report it. Now, you got to understand, you know, if you are a business and if you're trying to, you know, like get people excited or you want to catch people off guard with, oh, man, that's going to happen. Like be real excited. Then you kind of have to know that that's something that businesses, they love to do. They love to do that. I mean, you know, even even in my own gym, even in my own gym, I don't tell them certain things. I want to surprise, you know, some of my athletes, you know, I'm having little specials here or we go through like little prizes and we do stuff and I just want to surprise them. Well, you know, if I'm doing deals that week and, you know, I put out and, and I, I announce the deals and people call and come to my gym, it's like, OK, cool. You know, that's the stuff I want to know. But if somebody, you know, revealing information, stuff that you want to tell that you don't want nobody to know, like it's almost like you're telling your best friend that you finna, you know, give your girlfriend an engagement ring because you want to ask her to marry. But then your friend turn around and he go right. He go right out there and tell your girlfriend that you plan on marrying her. Hey, look, look, dog. Hey, uh, hey, listen, uh, he gonna surprise you. Oh, yeah, really? Well, what? Oh, well, he about to give you an engagement ring. What? And then, you know, when you go to surprise her, she not as excited because, well, she already know that this is what you gonna do. So Dana White was kind of feeling some kind of way about that. Like, you know, he looking like, damn, who the hell told Ariel? Who told Ariel? Ariel, shut the up. Like, that, that's Dana White's whole story. Like, Ariel need to shut the F up. And I understand from a business point where Dana White coming from. I, I get it. I get that. 
Ari Hawani need to shut up. He talked too damn much. And see, his big nose and his big mouth had pretty much cost him, you know, bags. Now, he telling everybody, well, you know, I'm doing well. I work for Spotify, and I do this, and I do this, and I do this. And um, the ESPN deal that they were giving me, it just wasn't enough to what I thought that they would give me and all this other stuff. Uh, you, you know, from what he, from how he explained it, see, you can't hide your state of being. Because Ariel was saying, hey, can I cover basketball? It seemed like Ariel Hawani was trying to make himself relevant or, you know, was trying to, I guess, justify his existence at ESPN when he run around there begging, can he do sideline basketball? You ain't a basketball commentator, boy. Your strong point's MMA. But, you know, I'm just saying, though, it, 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 to me it seemed like he was trying to justify his existence. Can't hide your state of being. You can't hide it. And, you know, maybe Dana White also has something to do with, you know, Ari Hawani not getting what he deserved. Because uh, I'm going to tell you, you're not valuable to ESPN if Dana White can't come in, you know, the MMA leader. And you cover MMA. And you can't, you know, get any interviews with the MMA leader. Like, that, that, that's, not, that's not lucrative to ESPN. It's not valuable. So I see why they cut his, his pay down or whatever they were going to, uh, you know, give him. I see why. Because it's almost like Ari Hawani is useless. He is. He's useless to ESPN. Because you can't interview Dana White. You can't get any, any exclusives. You may get interviews with certain fighters, but you can't get any real interviews with Dana White because he's not going to talk to you. He ain't got a damn thing to say to you. So, I mean, I, I see it from an ESPN point of view. <laughs> and they gave him a little whole deal to treat an area like the whole that he is, and that's just what it was. See, sometimes in business, you do have to shut the hell up. Sometimes you got to keep your mouth shut because when you open your mouth too soon or you reveal information, it could cost you down the run. Like, you know, when I was actually installing my first gym, I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. Because, you know, I had people behind the scenes working against me. Man, I had all kind of stuff going on, man. I had all kind of stuff going on. And I'm just like, what the hell? Are you serious? I had all kind of stuff going on behind the scenes where people was, was trying to, you know, get the best of me. And, you know, I just wasn't going to allow that to happen. I just wasn't going to allow that to happen. I wasn't going to do it. Um, I, um, so I did my thing, and when my gym finally opened, that's when people knew. But by the time people were trying to come against me or do anything, it was too late. I'd already got my, my business going, and I already started doing what I had to do. But that's, you know, Ari Hawani has learned, learned a valuable lesson. Keep your damn mouth shut. Keep your damn mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut, okay, with certain things. They told you don't say nothing. They told you don't say a damn thing, and what did you do? You opened your mouth. You spoke. They told you to be quiet. They told you don't announce this shit. But see, he announced it because he was really, really trying. He was really, really trying to, you know, I guess, I don't know, be the guy that broke the story. Hey, how did you get this information? How did you get all of this? How did you get it? How did you get it? Morning, sir. Man, it's going to be a good one today. Hey, man. Oh, okay. That's your air conditioner. Okay. All right, man. I'm still leaking out the bottom of that car, man. But, yeah. Anyway, I'm talking to y'all fools. Yeah, so that's what happened. Area Hawaii is a victim of his big nose and his own damn big mouth. And really, you ain't got nobody to think for it. It's his fault. It's his own damn fault, y'all. Um, can I say that Dana White and, you know, some of the fighters, they bullied him? Yeah, I can say that. But then he allowed that, too. See, I'm going to tell you, man, if you go in on Dana White and you come back at him, he's not going to, he's going to, he might not like you, but he'll respect you. He may not like you very much, but Dana White will respect you. But see, Aria just used to sit, and Aria just used to sit and take it, man. And I used to be like, damn, you know, how much more is Area Hawani going to take? Like, seriously, how much more is he going to take? Like, how much more is he going to allow, like, Dana White and all these fighters to just disrespect him? And then, you know, they used to disrespect him in front of his family? Like, hell, man, no. Couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. Could not and would not be me. And that, that's just the way that is.